All right. What's up, everybody? Good afternoon. How y'all doing? How y'all feeling? Good. All right. So we are going to be in 1 Samuel 17. If you have your Bibles, go ahead, do a little flippity flip. If you have your phones, do a little scrollity scroll. Okay. And we are going to get into it today. The message today is super simple. You are equipped. Say it with me. You are equipped. Say it again for the people in the back. You are equipped. Okay, we are going to be coming from 1 Samuel 17. We're going to be looking at a few texts today. So we're just going to walk this thing out together. So we are going to be talking about David and Goliath. Who've heard of David and Goliath before? Raise your hand. Okay, a couple of people. So for the people that didn't raise your hand, I just want to give you some historical context and a little bit of background. So David and Goliath is written in 1 Samuel 17. Who was it written by? Some people will say, oh, it's obvious it was written by Samuel. However, it was written by Samuel up until chapter 25. So some scholars say that it was written with Nathan and Gab. So that's a little bit of historical background, as well as who was it written to? It was written to the Israelites. And basically, they were under judges, but they start transitioning under kings. Anybody know Saul? Okay, a few people know Saul. We're not going to talk about him a whole lot, but if you know him, you know him. Um, and then also David was one of the kings. And this fight, fight took place in Soka and Eska in the Valley of Elah. So that's a little bit of historical background. And so we are going to go ahead and get into it. So if you fall asleep, which I hope you don't, I want you to stay engaged in the Word of God. The takeaway from this message is you are strengthened and equipped to face your giants by the power of God. You are equipped and strengthened to face your giants only by the power of God. So let's go ahead and jump into 1 Samuel 17, verse 17. Because I want you to know, people will be like, oh, well, David got to fight Goliath and he just got up there. No, there is some background that you need to know about David. So David was one of eight and he was the youngest. He was the son of Jesse. Shout out to Jesse and his mama. Shout out to his mama too. We don't know her name, but shout out to her too. Um, and he, in verse 16, in 1 Samuel 16, he was picked to be king by Samuel. However, when we get to 1 Samuel 17, his daddy, let's go ahead and read it. Verse 17 says, And Jesse said to David, his son, Take for your brothers an ephah of this parched grain and these ten loaves and carry them quickly to the camp to your brothers. Verse 18. Also, take these ten cheeses to the commander of their thousands. See if your brothers are well and bring some token from them. Family, my first point today that we're going to talk about is focus. David's original focus to go to the battle was because his daddy said, hey, take a little bread, take a little cheese, and come back and report to me. However, when he heard that Goliath was talking that talk to the Israelites, he said, hold on, who literally is putting their mouth on my God, on our God? And he was like, listen, as soon as he said that, it drops down into verse 26. And it says, and David said to the men who stood by them, what shall be done for the man who kills this Philistine and take away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that shall defy the armies of the living God? Literally, in our term, David was like, who is this bald head scallywag talking about my God, putting your name on my God in our day term? He's like, who is this big back? talking about my God. No, 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 no. We're not about to do that. So guess what? His focus changed. When he got there, his focus had to change because he was supposed to go, hey, brothers, I got a little cheese for you. I got a little grain for you and come back. Daddy, listen, they down there and they, they at war. They've they been there for 40 days. I don't really know what they're doing, but the giant keep coming up 40 days, 40 days. And he like, no, my focus has to change. Family, what is your focus on? Is your focus on the giants that are in your lives or is your focus having to change what God is saying to you? God, David had to change his focus to what God had called him to do. He told him, he, listen, you got you to gotta step up. You got to step up. They was there for 40 days, family. What were they doing? Playing Uno, patty cake, goldfish? Like why, no, why did no one think to ask? hey, listen, this giant is talking that talk, and we soldiers, we need to be walking that walk. But David, he said, listen, 
Mm-mm. We're not, we're not about to have this. Something my husband always told me. He said, it's not that you ask a question, it's how you ask the question. So family, people, the soldiers probably were asking various different questions. We may ask different questions in our lives. Why are we facing this giant of infertility? Why are we facing this giant of financial? Why are we facing these bad grades in school? Why are we facing these, this divorce? But family, we could switch the question and say, Lord, what am I supposed to learn from this? Lord, what am I supposed to get from this? Lord, how am I supposed to grow through this? Because if we keep going with these why questions, oh, wait, why is this happening to me? Why is this giant coming up against me? Why do I feel always under attack? God, what am I supposed to learn from this? Family, it's easy to retreat back when you want to face your giant into a safe place. Those Israelites could have, they had the armor, they had everything prepared for them, but they were scared. What set them apart, what set David apart from them is that he took courage and he had faith in the Lord that the Lord was on his side and he focused on what the Lord had in store for him other than the giants. Family, are we focusing on what the Lord has for us or are we focusing on the giants that we face? Family, we can't keep focusing on the giants that's in front of us. We got to focus on the God that we serve. And so something that's so important about question, how do you know when you're asking the right questions? Mm -hmm. Matthew 6, 33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added unto you. So when you're asking God those questions, you're like, okay, Lord, let me check with you. Am I asking the right question? Or am I just in my flesh? Man, oh, woe is me. This about me. I'm, I, got, I just got so much stuff going on, and it's hard, and you feel all bogged down. But David, he didn't feel bogged down. He stood up firm in the Lord. And family, when we look at our next point, which is fit, we look at the simple fact that we're looking at his outfit. Anybody got a grandma named Shirley? <laughs> Anybody know a, name, a lady named Shirley? Shirley Caesar? Okay. Green beans, tomatoes, potatoes. Okay. So let me tell you this story about my grandma. My grandma Shirley May, shout out to my grandma Shirley May if you watch it, girl. Um, she, when I was younger, she would, she had three to four closets in her house. She had a closet in her front room. She had a closet in the back room where this nice mirror was. She had a closet in her um, other bedroom. Y'all, she had so many closets full of clothes. And every Saturday, I would go over her house. She was like, girl, we going to JCPenney's. Grandma, what, you, what we going to JCPenney's for when you got clothes in your closet with the tags on it? And she was like, because I need something else. And I'm like, okay. But when I was younger, I would love to put on her clothes. She would let me put on her jacket. She would let me put on her heels. And back in the day, they used to have press powder. If you know me, I love to do a beat face. But she, she'd be like, oh, put the press powder on, put a little lipstick on. And I would stand in the mirror, and I was like, oh, I look so pretty. And then when I would try to walk, I started stumbling because I couldn't, I couldn't walk in her clothes. I wasn't fit for what her, where she was. But I, w- I would try it on. I would try it on. And in this second point, when we look at fit, we look at David in verse 38. It says, then Saul clothed David with his armor. He put a helmet of bronze on his head and clothed him with a coat of mail. And David strapped his sword over his armor. And he tried in vain to go. And he had not tested them, y'all. How many of us are trying to put on other people's clothes and had not tested it? And it says that he took it off. And he put the staff in his hand and chose five smooth stones from the brook and put them in his shepherd's pouch. His sling was in his hand and he approached the Philistine. So I'm going to invite my volunteers up. I want to give you all a visual of what this looked like with Saul and David. So I'm going to go ahead and invite my volunteer up. Come on, Ezra. All right, everybody clap it up for the volunteers. Come on, y'all. Don't want to say. No, oh, okay, baby. All right. All right. All right. So, family, this is what it looks like. He literally saw put. I'll take this one. Saw put the helmet on his head. Family, and then he put the coat of mail on. Like, catch this visual. Like. 
Ezra, Ezra not that big to go out and fight Goliath, right? right. He, he literally has to put this on. And then Saul go, is going to give him the sword once he zip him up. He got to make sure he's zipped up. He don't want Goliath to get the zipper. <laughs> and then he's giving him that sword. Now go ahead, Ezra, do a little walk. Do a little walk for me. Okay. Can you, can you hold it in? Hold it up. Turn, it, turn to the people. Hold it this way. Hold it right here, baby. You think you could fight somebody with that? Don't take it out. Don't. We don't want to poke nobody out. <laughs> it's liabilities, baby. Liabilities, baby. Good. Okay, you good? Is it heavy? You feel like you could go up and beat your brother up with it? No. Okay, okay. Okay. You think you could beat a giant up with it? No. Oh, for sure, for sure. All right, we're going to go ahead and take that off and bring the other props out. So it says he took his staff and he took his sling bag and he had his slingshot. These were the tools that he had that could fit him to go to war. What Saul put on him could not fit him to go to war. So go ahead and walk with that. Do a little walk. You can walk that same boy. You bad. That feel look fit him, boy. You better give, give me some. Give me some skin, baby. He, he, could, he could do that because that's what God had fitted him for. God didn't fit him for what Saul had put on him. Sometimes we try to look at our outfits and be like, oh, well, other, the other person can do this. The other person can pray. Thank you, God. Clap for our volunteers. You can take it with you. You can take that. You can take it with you, the kids. Take this and put it in the back. Sometimes we get so caught up in what other people look like. Oh, sister can pray like this. Oh, my gosh, my other sister, she can worship like that. My other brother, he's always at church. But what has God fitted for you to do in this season? What has God called you and equipped you to do? Family, we get so caught up in looking at other people that we compare. But guess what? The enemy won't slip in. Goliath, he, he was ready too. It said Goliath had on a helmet of bronze. He had a coat of mail. I don't know who he was sending letters to, but he had a bronze on legs. He had a javelin. He had a spear. How many people don't have their fit on or their armor on when the enemy is armored up? Like we out here like, oh, well, I need to look like such and such so I can have an armor on. I, I need to look like my, my best friend because she's doing this. No, Jesus has already equipped us for what he's called us to do, whether that be in your families, whether that be in school, whether that be in your finances. He has equipped us, family. But what are you equipped with? We are equipped with the armor of God. And it says, Ephesians 6, it says, finally, be strong in the Lord and in his might. Family, he didn't call you to be strong in your might. He called you to be strong in his might. And sometimes we try to be strong in our own might and like, oh, oh, God, I got this. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> you, then you come back to God, God, I don't have it. I can't. <laughs> I just can't do this anymore. I can't face this giant anymore because it's too big. He didn't say that you had to handle it on your own. He said, come to me because I'm going to handle it and I'm going to give you strength. How many of us are trying to walk in our own strength? When we need to lean on the Lord. Verse 11 says, put on the full armor of God so that you can take stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers and against authorities, against the powers of the darkness, against the spiritual forces of the e evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done all that you can, stand Family, after you have done all that you can, stand. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and your feet fitted with the readiness for the gospel. In addition to this, take up the shield of faith with what you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil. Take up. Family, we have been equipped by what God has given us but we are so quick to be like, well, I don't know what I'm equipped with. I, I, don't, I don't really know what I'm supposed to be doing. God has already given us those tools and that access. Listen, check my fit. Hey, check my fit. Hey, check my fit. Hey, tell your neighbor, say, check my fit. 
check my fit. Hey, check my fit. You have been equipped to have the outfit of God on. So when you go into places and spaces, you are equipped to face the giants that come against you. You don't have to say, oh, well, I, I, don't, I don't have this, this particular breastplate on. Why in Ephesians 6, he already gave it to you? Why are you looking at somebody else's breastplate? Why aren't you saying, hey, Lord, you already gave it to me? Your fit may not look like anyone else's. Your calling may not look like anyone else's. But family, David literally went to battle and people did not equip him nor call him. Saul already disqualified him. His brother was like, wait, why, why are you even here? Like, what are you doing? You're not, you're not equipped for this. How God has been preparing us to face our giants in your life. God has already been preparing you. But are you like, oh, well, I'm really not prepared for this giant. In verse 33, it says, and Saul said to David, you are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him. You are but a youth. How many of us have been told, oh, you can't do this because of your age? You, you don't have the qualifications because of your age limit or your background. No, no, no. It says, 34 says, but David said to Saul, your servant used to keep sheep for his father. And when there came a lion or a bear that rolled up on me, that's my turn, and took out a lamb from the flock, I went after him and struck him and delivered him out of his mouth. And if he rose against me, I caught him by the beard. That means David said, hi, y'all, I got you now. Don't, don't, don't play with me. I didn't come to play up in here. He said, your servant, 36 says, your servant was struck down both lions and bears. And the uncircumcised, uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them. For he has defiled the armies of the living God. Family, don't forget the season that God has prepared you for when you face the giants in your life. Whether that's infertility, whether that's your finances, whether that's your relationships, whether that's your children. Family, God has already prepared you to face the giants in your life. Literally, let me tell you another story. When I graduated from JMU in 2017, I said, oh, God, I'm graduate. I got this job lined up that's paying $50,000 to a graduate. That's a lot of money. And I said, okay, I have these interviews lined up. And I'm like, oh, I got the first one in the bag. ka -ching. Got the second one in the bag. ka -ching. Third one. I said, oh, I'm there. This is it. And literally, I got a call back. I was waiting for the call. And they were like, sorry, ma'am. Is this Miss John? Well, Evans, that was my maiden name. Um, I'm sorry, unfortunately we went with somebody else. I said, no, no, Lord, what am I supposed to do? I started praying, I'm like, what am I supposed to do? And he told me to go back to Texas Row House. I said, to do what? Serve tables, who, me? <laughs> I'm supposed to be making $50,000 after I graduate, right? <laughs> he said, no, I want you to go back and serve tables at Texas Row House. I had already been doing that for three years throughout school. And I was like, okay, Lord, I'm dragging my feet like, where is the door? Okay, we're here. And so I got there. I already knew the people. I was really cool with the owner. And that year, that specific year, I was able to start a small group. I was able to pray for people. I was able to invite people to church. It wasn't in me that I was doing that. It was in the Lord's strength that, and being obedient to what the Lord had done and what he told me to do. Just like David. His daddy told him to drop off the little grain, drop off the little cheese, and come back. But when the Lord calls you to do something, your focus has to switch. And so in this moment of preparation, I was like, me and my husband, we was like feeling that the Lord was calling us to help plant a church. And I was like, <clears throat> who? <clears throat> okay. All right. What are we going to do? And he was like, you'll do what you did in, Myrtle, in Harrisonburg. That's where we lived, Harrisonburg, Virginia. And he was like, help start campus ministry. I said, oh, that's a giant, baby. Build it from the ground up? No way. And when I got here, I, and the Lord said, I've been preparing you for this. At Texas Row House, I've been preparing you for this. Because guess what? Y'all, at Texas Row House, it was all college students. It was all young adults. So when I got here to Myrtle Beach, yeah, it was hard. Yeah, I was in the valley. Yes, it was difficult. But he had already fit and equipped me to do what he had called me to do. And how many of us have been in a prepared season, but then we like, oh, we get in front of our giant. Like, I don't remember that. Oh, God, can you remind me, please? Please remind me. And he's like, I already prepared you. But do you remember what I said in the prepared season? Yeah. So when you get in front of your giant, listen, I can say what I did. David said, 
I have already, when the lions and the bears came to, to the flock, I, I, can, I can strike them down. When the giants come on campus, I can say, Lord, you already prepared me for this. Family, what are you standing in front of your giants and say, hey, you already prepared me for this. So what am I supposed to do? What am I equipped with? What armor am I putting on when I'm going against this giant? Family, we, we got to remember our prepared season. God has designed the tool specifically for you. The way you worship, the way you pray, the way you grow through things. Not go through things, grow through things. A lot of people are like, oh man, God, help me to go through this. No, Lord, help me to grow through this. Like I said earlier, you got to remember, you got to change what you say. Because how you say is how you say things is how you're going to go against your giant. Family, being equipped is, like I said, is not determined by anyone. It is determined by the Lord. So if you are, something I do want to make sure that if you are interested and are trying to figure out, hey, what, where is, what are my spiritual gifts? What am, is the Lord calling me to? What, what am I good at? What, how is he equipping me? Reach out to us. If you want to be interested in taking a spiritual gifts test, reach out to info at RiceCC, and we will help you figure out. We are a family church, and we don't want people to walk out here like, oh, I don't really know what God has called me to do. I, I see other people doing it, but I, I just am not sure. We want to help you grow. We want to support you. We're not a church that's just like, oh, yeah, we know Genesis to Revelations. No, we are a church that wants to walk with you to help you grow in the, and be fitted for what the Lord has called you to do here in the earth. The thing about this that I was, when I was studying, I was like, it's so interesting that Saul and his people, they were equipped, y'all. They had the training. They had the armor. They had the skill set. But guess what? They didn't pull up to the fight. They didn't pull up to the fight. David had to pull up to the fight. Family, are we ready to pull up to the fight to fight whatever the giants that come against our lives? Oh, I need y'all more response. Are we willing and faith ready to face the giants that come up against our lives to fight? Sir, so my third point is fight. Family, back in the day, I'm only 31, so back in the day, um, <laughs> We used to say, pull up. Like, when you ready to fight, pull up. It's only space and opportunity. Let's see. Let's make it do what it do. But guess what? In verse 45, it says, Then David said to the Philistines, You come to me with a sword and with a spear and with a javelin, but I come, into, come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. Family, how many of us are coming to our giants and say, I come to you in the name of the Lord and hosts? Oh, what are we saying? Oh, well, I come to you because I'm coming to you because I'm scared. <laughs> no, we are coming up to fight, family. Verse 46 says, this day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you down and cut off your head. He said, listen, you big back giant, I'm about to cut your head off, and it's going to be on the ground because of the God I serve. How many of us are telling, listen, I'm going to cut off your head, you giant, because of the God I serve? Yeah. It's not you telling me. Are we telling our giant who our God is or we, are we allowing our giant to tell us who we, our God we serve? Mm. Family, we can't allow our giants to tell us the God we serve. We tell our giants the God who our God is. Yeah. And verse 47 says, And that all this assemble may know that the Lord saves not by the sword. For the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into my hand. So family, whatever you are facing, whatever you come up against, you can tell that giant that you are coming into my hands because of the Lord and not because of what me or my strength. In verse 48, it says, When the Philistine arose and came and drew near to meet David, David ran quickly towards the battle line to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in his pocket and took out a stone and slung it and struck the Philistine on his forehead. The stone sank into his forehead and he fell on the ground. Family, we are equipped to fight, but what tools are we using in our hands? Family, worship is a weapon. Y'all need to start swinging. Are we pulling down heaven or are we just using loose words? Family, we have the tools in our pocket. We are equipped, but we have to get grounded in the Lord and say, I know the Lord of hosts. And if you come against me, I'm going to tell you about the God that I serve. You're not going to tell me about the God that I serve. Family, back then, listen, my pastor used to say this, Pastor Brian. He said, Nisha, what scripture are you saying on? I said, do what? 
what scripture I'm standing on. He said, when you go into a battle, you need to remember the scriptures that you are standing on. When David went into the valley, he can now say in Psalms 23, even though I walk through the valleys of the shadow of death, I will not fear no evil. Family, how many of us are going in these different valleys and like, oh, I don't got no scripture to stand on. What are you doing in your spare time? What scriptures are you reading? What scriptures are you standing on? When Pastor Brian told me that, I said, oh, for sure. I'm locked and loaded, baby. Listen, I listened to this song that called Treat It Like a Block, Point It at the Op, Run Up on a Demon When They Run Up in a Spot. Blip, blip, listen. Y'all better know what's up. When, it, when it's time to pull a scripture out the bag, you better lock and load it. Demon, giant, what's up? You better never back down. Because if you're backing down, you're only walking in the strength that you have, not in the strength of the Lord. And we have to remember the strength that we pull up to the fight with is not in our own. And we have to do that, family. One thing about it, Psalms 24 and 8 says, Who is the king of glory? The the Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Family, when we go up in our battles, we call on the name of the Lord. We pull down heaven by his name, not in our own name. So today, family, I want you to know, how do we see Jesus in this? Jesus was focused. Jesus had a focus. He came to save the world, family. Jesus was fitted and equipped. He came and said, listen, no death, hell, and the grave. That's, that could be his giant. He said, I defeat it. He said, it is defeated. It's under my feet. Family, Jesus was able to come to this earth where we were sinful and ratchet people. But he came to die for us. He came because he loved us. He came because we are the sons and daughters of God. But how many of us rest in that? How many of us know Jesus was ready for the fight? He said, pull up. What's up? He he did not stay on the cross. He did not stay in the grave. He rose on the third third day, proving that he was a son of God. And he's coming back for us, family. How many of us are ready when he comes back? How many of us will be ready when Jesus comes back for us? Because he's ready for us. But are we ready for him? Are we focused enough? here on earth? Are we fit in our outfits of armor to say, oh Lord, I'm, I'm fighting this battle. I'm ready. I'm sharing the gospel with my friends and family. I'm out here at my job. I want people to be equipped and know who you are because I don't want them to go to hell because I was able to share the gospel with people. And we want their hearts to be transformed, not because we opened our mouths, but because we serve the Lord of hosts. Amen. So family today, I'm going to go ahead and close us out and pray. Everyone bow your heads and close your eyes. God, I just thank you so much for this day. I thank you, Jesus, that you are with us. I thank you, Lord, that you speak, that you allow us to be focused on what you call us to do. God, you have equipped us and strengthened us to defeat the giants we face in our lives only by the power of God. So I thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing in these, your people. Family, if you have never accepted Jesus into your heart, we want to open up a moment right now so every eye closed, every head still bowed. And we're going to say this prayer together because we want people to go to heaven. (laughs) We don't want people to go to hell. And so say, Lord Jesus, I accept you into my heart. I am a sinner in need of a Savior. I confess with my mouth And believe in my heart that Jesus is Lord and that you died on the cross just for me and you didn't stay there. You rose again on the third day proving that you are the son of God and you are coming back for me. Thank you, Jesus, that I can live for you, that I can be focused, that I can be fit, And I can be ready for the fight ahead. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Peace out, family.